a man once said, I don't know who said it, but he said a man that is standing with someone that has no foundation, and if you're standing with him, you're both standing in quicksand. And when he falls, he will fall also. So let's turn to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, the third chapter. Third chapter, verse 11. One verse says, this is Paul, says, No one, or no one is able to lay any other foundation beside that which has been laid, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is a foundation. He's the foundation of our life. He's the foundation of the church. He's the foundation of everything. He's the Alpha and the Omega. And no man can lay another foundation. Only we can build on it. And that's who we're building. That's where the church is built on the foundation of Jesus Christ. The church is. We turn to Matthew, the 16th chapter. Matthew 16. Matthew chapter 16. Matthew 16, one verse here. Verse 18. Break it into a ball about Peter. Christ was saying this to Peter. He said, And I say also to you that you are Peter, meaning you are a stone, you're a pebble. But upon this rock, he's talking about himself, upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of the grave shall not prevail against it. And Christ alone is the head of His church. We have men that run organizations, but they're not a head. Jesus Christ is the head of His church. And you know, we don't, we don't have a religion. We have a way of life. Some people ask, what religion are you? No, I don't like to answer that. I like to say, I have a way of life. And that's the way of Christ. The way that the Bible talks about over a, a hundred times, I guess, the way in the New Testament alone. The way. It's a way of life that we live. People they kind of forget this. We have the... We, we get mixed up and there's a lot of distractions and deceptions in this world. Distractions, deceptions, that Satan the devil is thrown in our way. And we get involved with all making a living, a lot of mundane tasks that keep us from studying the Bible, keeps us from studying God's Word. And it also keeps us from thinking with Scripture. The best thing you can do before you get your mouth engaged is to first get your brain engaged. And sometimes I'm guilty of getting my mouth engaged before I get my brain engaged. And when I get my brain engaged first, then it ought to be guided by what Scripture says. And on the tongue can get you in a deep of trouble. And that's where, you know, it's better just to keep your mouth shut in a lot of situations. That's hard to do. You have to bite your tongue. And sometimes your tongue gets almost bit off. But Christ alone is the foundation of His church. It's a way of life. And our life must be built on Jesus Christ and not on a man. Especially if a man is not with Jesus Christ. If he's not quoting Jesus Christ. If he's not following Christ then you're following somebody that's looks like they're ashamed of it. I don't want to be associated because that man is standing in quicksand. He has no foundation. And the ball, when he falls, you will fall with him. 
to you. We'll follow it. Turn back over the last verse here. I'm going to give today's Matthew the seventh in the Matthew the seventh chapter. And this is the, the conclusion of the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew seven. And you know, the Sermon on the Mount, I call it, I've heard it called before, as a constitution for the kingdom of God. The cross Christ said, you do these things. Well, let's read it here. You do these things. Matthew 7, starting in verse 21. Breaking into a thought, says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but the one who is doing the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy through your name? Did we not cast out demons through your name? Did we not perform many works of power through your name? Didn't we have this big organization one time? Did we not do a lot of work in your name? Well, Christ says, and then I've confessed to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who work lawlessness. They give lip service to the kingdom of uh, the Ten Commandments. They give lip service to His laws and His ways, the way of life. Oh, they looked like they were following me, following Christ. Looked like they were doing His commandments. You know, we all come here on the Sabbath and keeping His commandments. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy? But I don't know. You might have went honky-talking last night. I don't know. I don't think you did. I'm sure you didn't. I'm sure you didn't. But I kind of know a few folks that, uh, well, and you tell them, mm, that's not quite keeping the Sabbath holy. That's not keeping it like you should. you got to be careful. Careful to do His commandments. And I was surprised at one time that some of them, how they got baptized, I don't know. They didn't know when the days begin, in, in the biblical days now, we know they begin and, end, begin and end at sunset. But it was just a complete surprise to them. And they didn't know it. It surprised to me, I, you know, Maybe I go, we ought to go back and just get back down to the fundamental, fundamentals of the Scripture and the fundamentals of Bible study and all that. But complete surprise to me that they did not understand. How did they get baptized? If you don't know when the Sabbath begins and when it ends, you know, it just kind of, I was just scratching my head for a long time. How did, how did you? And no wonder they've done some of the things they did. I guess they thought we'd go day by midnight, you know, like, uh, you know. I guess. I don't know. I just didn't figure it out. I didn't get there to ask them just, where were you coming from? How? Why are you thinking it? I don't know. But I was real surprised. But continuing on here, he said, I will confess to them, I never knew you. That's hard. I don't want to face something like that. I never knew you. And depart. Christ had to tell you to depart from Him. That you work lawlessness, iniquity, breaking commandments. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine, and this is what He quoted from the fifth chapter on here, doing all those, that's what He means. And I kind of alluded to the constitution of the kingdom of God. Who hears these words of mine and practices them. That means a continually process. Continue. Practice. Continue on. Just don't do them one time. You've got to continue. I will compare him to a wise man who built a ha his house upon the rock. The rain came down, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and the beat upon that house. But it did, it did not fall, for it was so founded upon the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not practice them, does not continue to practice. Keep on studying, praying, 
keep your mind on it, them sh shall be compared to a foolish man who built his house upon the sand. The rain came down, the floods came, the winds blew and beat upon that house. And it fell, and great was the fall of it because it was built on that sand. The foundation was built something that would not last. And you know, we have to be careful. Let's don't be foolish yourself and build on sand. Let's be wise and build on the rock. And that rock is Jesus Christ. Now I'll turn it over to the mechanical main message.